I've always been a little obsessed with organization. Maybe it's the minimalist in me or the perfectionist, but I find something so satisfying about creating order from chaos. And today, there's no shortage of advice online about how to organize our homes. I've got hundreds of pins and bookmarks to prove it. But it's hard to know which of this advice is helpful and which is needlessly complicating your life. So in this video, I wanna share nine realistic things that we actually do that help us to keep our home clean, tidy, and organized. So let's start with cable management. There's nothing that will set me into an unreasonable rage more than seeing exposed cables tangling out in the open. One thing that's helped are these cable ties, and also these cable ties. These little rubber ones are great for wrapping up cables quickly and holding them in place. They're especially handy if you find yourself needing to wrap and unwrap cables often. And I love these longer straps when I'm fastening multiple cables together or fixing them to furniture. These cable holders also help to secure our charging cables behind our end table. That way we can access them when we need to, but hide them away when they aren't in use sandwich bags. This is one of the simplest solutions that I discovered early on as a filmmaker. With the amount of nuts, bolts, and cables I was collecting, I needed a way to keep them all organized and easy to get to. I mean, I have over 30 hard drives and they all come with multiple cables. So one day I opened up the drawer in my kitchen, pulled out some sandwich bags, and started organizing all the little bits and bobs. You could use either sandwich bags or freezer bags to organize vitamins, baby bottles, and other household items. Most people have them in their homes, they're really cheap, and I found that they hold up for a really long time. One of the rules that we follow in our house that helps us keep things organized is don't put it down, put it away. I can't take credit for this rule as it's something that I picked up years ago through one of my many bookmarks, but it's been so helpful in keeping our house clutter free. When you get home from the gym, don't throw your bag on the ground, hang it up in the closet. When you're done with your dishes, don't put them in the sink, put them in the dishwasher. When your kids finish playing with their toys, ah, fuck it, just leave it there because he's gonna be back there in the same spot in two hours and who has the time to clean up after your kids 20 times a day? But I mean, you get the idea. When you first implement this rule, it's something that you really need to think about every time you put an object down, but eventually it becomes a habit. And without realizing it, you're helping to keep your house clutter free and you're also saving yourself a ton of time of cleanup later on. All right, so one tiny organization bonus tip that's not one of the nine main ones I'm talking about in this video, a magnetic sponge holder. I know it's impressive. It's got a little magnet that allows you to connect it to the inside of the sink. And so it hides your gross sponge out of the open kitchen area. And if it's wet, the water will just drip into the kitchen sink. I just love little practical devices like this that make a small but noticeable difference in how you keep your home tidy. One thing we were worried about when we moved into our house was the lack of storage. I've been picking up a lot of hobbies lately from golf to baseball and powerlifting. Nat has a lot of coats, bags, and hats. And with a new baby on the way, we weren't sure where the hell we were gonna store all of our stuff. This is the first home that Nat and I have ever owned. And so it's given us a little bit more freedom to create custom storage to fit our needs, like this cabinet right here behind me. This is what it looked like before we moved in. It was just one large broom closet, so much of it was inaccessible. We get very excited about storage. And here's what it looked like after the renovation. You can't even tell that these are storage cabinets, but behind each of these panels is a push to open closet. There's one row for my stuff, one row for Nat's, one row for Frankie's, and so on. One thing that's super convenient and also helps to keep the rest of our house a little more organized is adding a charging station inside of the cabinet. This way we don't have our devices charging on a countertop or on the ground next to an outlet. Literally all of these panels are storage all the way down to the smallest one here. This would have literally just been dead space if we hadn't installed these. And so now we can make use of it in a more intentional way. I don't even need that. I'm just doing this for the video. While we're on the understair storage, I wanna point out one thing that specifically helped us organize our front entryway more than anything else, a shoe cubby. After the first few months of living here, we noticed that our shoes kept piling up at the front door. But no matter how much we wanted to or tried to clean up the entry hallway, it would always get cluttered with a long row of shoes. We didn't have a closet at the front door and there wasn't enough space for a storage cabinet. So we got the idea to move around some of the storage under the stairs to make room for a shoe cubby. I measured out the space, added an additional shelf, and place some paper down to prevent the shelves from getting dirty. And then we were able to put all of our shoes out of sight. The white paper is actually kind of gross and getting a little bit dirty, so I might replace this with black paper in the future, but for now, this works fine for us. Sometimes we leave a few shoes at the front entryway, but it's by far so much more tidy than it used to be, and it's easy to stow all of them away if we want to. I know what you're thinking. Matt, how do you make videos about organizing your home so interesting? It's a good question. 
What I've learned is that if you wanna get really great at making videos, you don't need fancy equipment or a really expensive degree. What you really need is a roadmap. And that's why I made my YouTube course, which just opened up for enrollment. Master YouTube teaches you the steps, skills, and tools you need to start your channel, create original videos, and get your first 1,000 subscribers. This course won't give you the secret to becoming an overnight success, because there isn't one, but it will help you come up with original ideas, film high quality videos, even if you're just starting with your phone, learn a system to cut your editing time in half, and it'll also connect you with other creators doing the same thing. So this is the course community here. We've got people asking for advice on their videos, titles, and thumbnails, and celebrating their wins. Look, John just got a thousand subscribers. Do you need this course to become a successful YouTuber? No, but it will save you a lot of time, take the guesswork out of every decision, and help you find your vision, instead of just copying someone else's formula. Master YouTube is closing at the end of the week and won't be open again for another six months. So if you wanna sign up, go to slowgrowth.com slash YouTube or click the link in the description below this video. Now let's talk about junk drawers. Without structure, every drawer eventually becomes a junk drawer. One thing that's helped us keep our drawers organized and clutter-free is adding drawer dividers. For my office, I use drawer dividers to neatly organize all my gear into sections reserved for lenses, cameras, and batteries. And I've used a toolbox liner to make sure that nothing slides around or gets damaged when opening and closing the drawer. We've also used drawer dividers in our kitchen to separate our daily vitamins from medicine that we use less frequently, or by splitting up otherwise chaotic junk drawers into something a little bit easier to organize and understand. In the past, we've also used a cutlery or a silverware tray to get even more organized. We've used this to organize junk drawers and toiletries. We don't currently find that we need them in this house, but they're a great alternative to drawer dividers. So when you live in a home with minimal storage, every space counts. And that's why we decided to get really intentional with how we organize the space under our bed. There are some beds that come with drawers, but you can also use these zip up bags like we do. We use these bags to store seasonal clothes or clothes that Frankie has grown out of. Anything that we don't immediately need right now, but will need in the future, gets zipped up and stored away. One essential principle to keeping our home organized has been everything has its place. This takes a little bit of thought and planning, but it's helped us clean our home faster and prevents things from getting lost, something that I used to do all the time. So whenever Nat and I move into a new home, we always get on the same page about where we're gonna store everything from our silverware to office supplies. One thing that's helped us to do this is to pick up a bunch of different sized clear plastic containers. While they aren't beautiful, they make it really easy to see what's inside without opening them up. Finding a place for everything is a little bit easier when you limit the things that you own in the first place. So we don't buy shit that we don't need. Every time we think about making a purchase, each time someone drops off a bag of clothes for Frankie, we really think through what we wanna bring into this house and what we wanna keep. When you have less stuff, you have less stuff to organize, less stuff to put away, less stuff to put into sandwich bags, and less stuff to separate with drawer dividers. And this isn't an easy process. It means really thinking through every single item that's in your home. I may have 30 hard drives, but I didn't keep every single cable for every single drive. I kept a handful that I needed and recycled the rest. And I think most importantly, we're not afraid to let go of things when our life changes. Whether it's a jacket we stop wearing or a gym belt we no longer need, we will frequently donate or sell items to help clear the clutter from our home. Our house is organized, but it's not perfect. The space under our sink is a mess. We have a cabinet that's stuffed with cleaning supplies and my wardrobe definitely isn't Instagram worthy. And that's totally fine with us because now that we've got a system that's good enough, we can spend our time doing more important things than organizing used batteries.